as Nintendo fans, we can't ever really complain about not having enough great games to play on the Switch. Currently, the eShop tells us that there are over 20,000 different games available for download right now. And while we're still not complaining, we're, we're not, there are a few games that would make this library completely unbeatable. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we'll be looking at over 70 different games that have never been released on the Nintendo Switch currently. And we'll weigh in on how likely it is that we'll see them release before the Switch kicks the bucket and gets replaced by the successor sometime down the road. So in a perfect world, this video will become outdated really quick. So be sure to sound off in the comments down below if the future you is playing any of these games on your Switch right now, or if you're just genuinely sad that your favorite classic game is still being neglected. Hey, Ribbit King, it's okay. I have your food right here. Oh no! The first Alan Wake is available on Switch in remastered form. Now, it's an unimpressive port, but it signaled Remedy's interest in the console and sparked our fever dreams that the Game of the Year winning sequel might stand a chance on Switch after all. But thinking back to the cloud version of Remedy's Control, maybe that's the only way that Alan Wake 2 could take form on Switch. And how many people would really want that? Artifacting and input lag would certainly do a disservice to this beautifully nightmarish world. And as much as it pains us, we just might have to wait for the next Nintendo console to see Alan right again. The original Psychonauts has been playable on nearly everything but a Nintendo platform, even though it carries so much DNA of what makes some of the Big N's best games so special. Now, even though Double Fine was purchased by Microsoft back in 2019, we don't have to assume it's impossible to see Psychonauts 1 or 2 make their way to the handheld hybrid. The second game is one of the most visually striking and mind-bending projects to release in recent years, and there's a good probability it would take a lot of retooling to be made playable on the Switch. However, it's the kind of thing we think Nintendo fans would likely fall head over heels with if they had the chance, so maybe all the effort would be worth it. It's been nearly three years now since Psychonauts 2 released on Xbox and PlayStation platforms, so there is a chance that they've been busy cooking up a Switch port, or maybe better yet, a full remake of Psychonauts 1? It is fun to let the mind wander, and it sure does feel like a no-brainer, doesn't it? A wacky Wario Land-inspired platformer that isn't on Switch? Whose idea was that? Tour de Pizza's momentum-based platformer Pizza Tower dashed onto PC to rave reviews in 2023, and we've been waiting for a Switch port ever since. It's one of those indies that we thought we'd see in a direct or indie world for the last two years. And in the absence of any official Wario Land news, despite our prayer circles, we feel like we increasingly need it. While you'd think they'd want a slice of that Switch pie, the game's developers have been tempering expectations. In a post on its Steam page in 2023, they said a port to <clears throat> you know where will not be coming anytime soon. But we'll always say that a lot can change in a year. An old school ode to PlayStation era Resident Evil and Silent Hill, SFB Games' survival horror throwback Crow Country feels like a natural fit on Nintendo's system, although it wasn't on the menu in 2024 when it launched everywhere else. Chances seem high for this to make the leap to Switch, although if we can have some fun and speculate just for a moment, we imagine SFB looked at the monster success of its Switch launch game Snipper Clips and is prepping Crow Country's Nintendo debut for the launch of their next console. Even though the game seems like it wouldn't need the graphical power of a Switch successor, it would help Crow Country avoid getting lost in the swill that washes even great titles away on the eShop these days. Again, that's pure guesswork on our part, but that's what we'd do. There are plenty of games here that have been on our personal wish lists for years, and Subset Games classic FTL Faster Than Light appeals to our sci-fi proclivities as well as feeling like a great fit for a handheld hybrid. Unfortunately though, it feels like the ship has left the bay on this one, as the devs themselves have said that playing FTL on a gamepad or a small touchscreen just isn't practical. But given the appropriate porting care and attention, we'd beg to differ. Unfortunately, it's probably just not worth their time at this stage. But since this whole list is a last hurrah for our wildest hopes and dreams, we'd still love to see subsets pre Into the Breach game join the Switch family. 
Platinum games probably have bigger fish to fry, but we still like the idea of Mad World's inky black and white presentation and bright red blood spray spruced up in HD on a Switch OLED. Think of just how well those few colors would pop. Thing is though, while we might pine for this relative pioneer, we may be in the minority as Mad World struggled to be successful even during the family friendly era of the Wii. So perhaps it would struggle to stand out in the 2020s too. We're getting to the point where most of the mainline Mario games are playable on Switch, but Super Mario 3D Land is still missing from the lineup. We may have Super Mario 3D World, but 3D Land is still an impressive game in its own right. It deserves to be here. We suppose there's always a chance with a Nintendo IP, you never know what can make the leap, like Luigi's Mansion 2 and Donkey Kong Country Returns. But given that 3D World improved on this formula in nearly every single way, we're going to go with a tentative not happening. If it does make its way to Switch, or the successor, it will likely come in some expanded version, we think. More level variety and better bosses would be awesome. Larian Studios Baldur's Gate 3 struck a nerve with fans of the series and newcomers alike, and with both Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 already on Switch with enhanced additions, completing the trilogy would be a natural thing. But really, we should chalk this one up as another one for the Switch 2 wishlist. If Nintendo's next console is as has been suggested, an iterative update on the current hybrid, and if third party devs are gearing up to hit the ground running with ports that aren't really feasible on the current model, we could be looking at a launch line up for the ages. All of this of course is speculation, but we like to keep dreams alive over here, don't we? There's no denying that the neon soaked Xbox 360 hit Geometry Wars would look great on a Switch OLED, and the series definitely peaked with the second entry. But honestly, we'd be pretty surprised to see Microsoft scoop this deep into the Activision back catalog to please those who recall the original with such affection. Even with the modest budget a Switch port would likely require in comparison to Activision's other flagship franchises. Marvel Snap is one of the most played games of 2023 for many, including our very own staff writer Jim Norman. He's obsessed, and he'd very much like to play it on the clock someday. Since it's available now on PC, we were expecting a Marvel Snap console port to drop months ago, but maybe things are going too well on PC and mobile for the devs to worry about addressing console ports for the time being. Hopefully though, they toss us all a bone at some point and they remember to include touch controls too. The Canadian studio Next Level Games is probably too busy with Luigi's Mansion these days to worry about a follow-up to its excellent Wii-era take on Punch-Out. And thinking it through, there's probably not a whole lot to be added to this lovely 3D rendition of Nintendo's classic pattern-based punching, which is where a sparking HD Switch port comes in. While we know this isn't a guaranteed knockout idea, we still think this would make for a great late life Switch remaster, and toss in the Doc Lewis Club Nintendo minigame for good measure, too. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is utterly fantastic, and is so much more than just another Mario Galaxy game. This would have been a perfect addition to the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection, and since that's been long taken off store shelves, we feel the stars just may not align for this one, as much as it deserves to be re-released. With how much love Castlevania gets on Nintendo already, it feels odd when you stop and realize we've never seen Castlevania Symphony of the Night on this side of the pond. The PlayStation exclusive Requiem compilation that launched back in 2018 would go down so easy with Switch fans and leaves us wondering why it still isn't here. At this point, if Konami just wanted to drop this one individually like they did during the Xbox 360 era, we'd probably buy it just so we could play this groundbreaking classic on the go. We probably wouldn't even dream of this if it were not for the wonderful Portal 1 plus 2 collection that's already available on Switch. For the most part, we can live without the Orange Box's Team Fortress 2, but a cheeky Half-Life collection would be a beautiful thing. Half-Life 3 may always be a pipe dream, but let's hope the Portal Porters at NVIDIA Lightspeed Studios will consider bringing this one over at some point as well. Sure, we got Mass Effect 3 on Wii U, but the console's poor sales figures made EA grumpy and we haven't had another Mass Effect game since. 
and we think asking first timers to jump in with the final game in the trilogy may not have been the wisest decision either. Now our faith in EA has been fleeting for years, but the Switch version of EA Sports FC 2024, along with some smaller EA published games like Lost in Random, Knockout City, and It Takes Two have us reconsidering our stance. We'll try to not get all of our hopes up, but it does seem more doable now than before. Supergiant might be busy with Hades 2, but the developer's back catalog is nearly complete on Switch, except for one game. Pyre. This is a visual novel that combines RPG relationships and stats with fantasy basketball. It's a fascinating game with all the bells and whistles you'd expect from this indie developer. Unfortunately, it seems unlikely given where the team's focus is now. Back in 2017, Supergiant said they had no plans to launch Pyre on other consoles than PlayStation 4. Then in 2019, in an interview with US Gamer, the lead writer Greg Kasabin told the site it would already be done if it were simple. So five years on, it's not looking so promising for Pyre. System Shock is an iconic game for many, and what Night Dive Studios accomplished with the System Shock remake is nothing short of remarkable. It's one of the most unique and beautiful shooters we've ever experienced, retaining many sensibilities from the original that will either fill you with unbridled joy or completely turn you off. When System Shock launched on other platforms, it was pretty obvious why Night Dive had chosen to skip the Switch. The visuals are just a tad beyond what Nintendo's console is capable of right now. But we'll be quite shocked if we don't see this release early on in the successor's lifespan. Another classic inexplicably MIA for years is Chrono Trigger, which was last released on a Nintendo console in 2008 for the DS. A Chrono Trigger Nintendo Switch Online drop would be stellar, but Square knows it could charge for this one, and frankly, they should. We want to pay for those PlayStation-born cutscenes and DS quality of life improvements, and we know we're not alone in that. We've all thought this would be a guarantee for Switch by now, but you'd also assume there's a remake coming at some point too, whether it be a 2.5 HD remake like Octopath Traveler's art style, or something more expansive. So maybe Square isn't eager to muddy the waters with a simple re-release of the Steam version, even if that would delight millions of fans old and new. The Switch has a current lack of Dreamcast hits, and the original Jet Grind Radio is at the top of our wish list. So what's the deal, Professor K? Rumors of a full-blown remake of the first Jet Set Radio are making the rounds now, so this could be the reason we've not seen the original on Switch just yet. But we suppose we don't really know what's stopping Sega from bringing back the Dreamcast hits Shenmue, Fantasy Star Online, and Sonic Adventure 2. We'd even be up for a straightforward port of the 2012 HD remaster, plus a grander reimagining. But I suppose we're just suckers for blue skies sometimes, aren't we though? We already have the original Metroid 2 on Nintendo Switch Online, but the 3DS remake from Mercury Steam is glorious, and we'd be liars if we said we didn't want it on Switch 2. But let's be brutally honest here. We want everything Metroid on this morphing console that we love so much. Prime 2 and 3 seem like a more likely way to ramp up for Prime 4 next year, and any other release with Samus as the leading role may distract from that. We're happy to be wrong, but that's our scan of the current environment. The Switch is no stranger to Resident Evil games, having hosted several native and cloud-based entries over the years, but the original PS1 trilogy along with Code Veronica are all missing. The cheesy dialogue and old school gameplay mechanics make these ones really important for longtime fans, and we'd like to play them in their original forms too. Recently, the original Resident Evil launched on GOG, with Resident Evil 2 and 3 to follow soon. Code Veronica X, meanwhile, is available on basically every other major platform. So maybe there is a chance that these classics will really jump scare us in the next holiday hallway window. The recent Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Remastered Collection gave us new hope that perhaps the Embracer Group might invest in porting the Crystal Dynamics and IDOS Montreal Trio Tomb Raider reboot series to Switch. But given how Embracer is doing these days, which is not good, this feels pretty unlikely, especially given the care and attention these games would need to run well on Switch. Perhaps we'll see these return on future hardware where more power might help them brute force their way through. 
You'd think the Disney Afternoon Collection would be a 100% guarantee for Switch. It's a no-brainer to end all no-brainers. Yet here we are, seven years later, and still nothing. If they were part of the Nintendo Switch Online offering, we could understand it. But they're not. Who knows why they're absent, but we hope Capcom and Disney can fix that soon. Kirby's Epic Yarn already got a re-release on 3DS with added extras, but the fact it came out in 2019 when the Switch was in its ascension always seemed a bit odd to us. It's such a joyous experience, so it's a pity Switch owners haven't gotten the chance to play Goodfeel's glorious game in HD. We adore this one, and with Wii games like Donkey Kong Country Returns getting the late-gen Switch treatment, which also saw Second Life on 3DS, there's no reason Epic Yarn couldn't float over either. Following our return to Monkey Island, we thought we might finally see the spruced up special editions of the first two games sail onto Switch, but we were dead wrong. You could argue that the Disney red tape is what's holding LucasArts up, but that hasn't stopped various other LucasArts or Lucasfilm games from resurfacing. The Switch is a fantastic point and click machine, and it's nuts that we can't play this formative classic on it yet. If we could make a request, we'd ask to toss in Day of the Tentacle in full throttle for good measure, and you've got yourself a big compilation just waiting to happen. It's crazy that we have to keep reminding ourselves that there is no rhythm heaven on Switch. Every year we cross our fingers for this one, and every year we are disappointed. Sure, Tempo Labs Bits and Bops is giving incredibly similar rhythm-based minigame vibes, but we want Nintendo to bring back their franchise too. The greatest hits compilation that is Mega Mix is the best of them, if you ask us. So come on, Nintendo. It's never too late to right a wrong. The fact that the original Beautiful Joe is still stuck on the GameCube and PlayStation 2 is frankly astounding. It was one of the most unique games of its time, blending quirky, cel-shaded visuals with awesome combat augmented by effective time mechanics. The creator, Hideki Kamiya, has expressed interest in revisiting the franchise, but honestly, considering Capcom hasn't touched Beautiful Joe for nearly two decades at this point, we don't see a comeback happening anytime soon. But that doesn't mean that we don't want it, though. Bet you didn't expect to see Donkey Konga on this list. But you know what? It's a fine nomination from our resident Konga fan, Ollie Reynolds. And it's just about left field enough to actually happen. Is there anyone who could honestly resist picking up a Switch compatible set of DK bongos? Try to be honest with yourself. It's okay. We're big fans of Sam Barlow around these parts, so immortality is an obvious inclusion. It's probably a bit late to get her story on Switch too, but if we're just throwing dream ports at the wall, which is exactly what we're doing here frankly, we'll take that too. Netflix have already brought Immortality over to mobile with their gaming division, so we think this is a safe bet in due time. Maybe Nintendo would kick back a bit due to the spicier moments in the game, but one look at the eShop these days shows that Nintendo isn't as strict with their mature policies as they once were. <laughs> We've had 13 Sentinels and the recent Unicorn Overlord, but we'll take as much vanillaware as we can get, because the developer has yet to let us down. Muramasa, Odin Sphere, Dragon's Crown, and even Princess Crown are all excellent candidates, but of those, the Metroidvania Muramasa is the only one that's actually appeared on a Nintendo console before. Back in 2023, Vanillaware's president George Kamatani said he wants to port Muramasa the Demon Blade to modern consoles, but also admitted there would be problems, which sounds strange considering the game got a special release on the Vita over a decade ago. So look, George, it's simple, really. Just work up a Vanillaware 20th anniversary collection and we'll all buy it, even though we already own your games on other platforms. Silent Hill Shattered Memories is a fantastic game, which arguably suffered from being on a console that people just didn't associate with horror titles, despite there being several standouts. This was another Sam Barlow venture, and the way the game made use of the system's features really set it apart, whether it's the speaker and the controller, or intelligent use of motion controls to draw you into this reimagining of the Silent Hill series' first entry. A Switch port couldn't replicate the Wii Remote speaker functionality, or could it? 
with the HD rumble frequencies, but we'd welcome a collective memory jog of this underappreciated reimagined version of the 1999 PlayStation original. Konami has been a lot better lately about recognizing the Silent Hill series, so maybe it really could happen. Sam himself has even teased the idea of bringing back this formula though, so we'd happily take that too. Another incredible platformer helmed by Good Feel is Wario Land Shake It. It has a lovely hand-drawn art style that would still hold up beautifully in HD today. It's been a while since we've enjoyed a non-Wario game in the Wario canon too. For us, this one really depends on when Nintendo was planning to deploy the Switch successor. If the announcement comes through that, hey, it's coming in November 2025, that would leave plenty of time to fill with first-party published Switch games, which makes raiding the back catalog all the more attractive. Look, there's no way that you thought this wouldn't be on the list. Let us all dream, okay? It's easy to forget that Elden Ring launched for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and they held up pretty well. We don't realistically ever see it coming to the current Switch, but we'd be ecstatic to see this masterpiece and its recent DLC bundled on Nintendo's next console around launch. Coming from Hironobu Sakaguchi, the creator of Final Fantasy, the last story was one of the Project Rainfall games, along with Xenoblade Chronicles and Pandora's Tower that players campaigned to see released in North America. An impressive, ambitious RPG and one of the last big releases on Wii, a Switch Encore would be most welcome. And now that Sakaguchi's studio Mistwalker is bringing their game Fantasian to Switch before the end of the year, the chances of squeezing in a port of this seem too slim for now. But now that they're working with Switch hardware, maybe the Wii won't be its final resting place after all. Not many look back on the new Super Mario Bros. series as a particularly high point for the Nintendo mascot, especially after a game like Wonder, but we're always up for some more multiplayer platforming and new Super Mario Bros. Wii brings it in droves. Although the fact we already have Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe on Switch would suggest that its Wii predecessor probably isn't at the top of Nintendo's agenda, the overwhelming admiration for Wonder's weirdness makes a port even less likely, as it just might feel like too great of a step back. Sin and Punishment's star successor really lives up to its name, with innovation, stunning set pieces, and some of the best shmup action to come from a developer with incredible form in that area. With the original Japan-only classic available to play now on Nintendo Switch Online, Treasure's excellent sequel deserves some love too, so let's file this one under wildcard status. It would please hardcore fans to no end, and it deserves to get another outing, but so does almost every game made by Treasure. Nope, we still don't have these on Switch. And so what if we own them on Wii U? We still want them here too. At this point, we have to imagine that The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD are being saved for the Switch successor at this point. It sure would be a grand last hurrah for the Switch, but with the 2024-2025 lineup looking increasingly stacked after the latest June Direct, we know Nintendo wouldn't want these ports to be lost in a flood of new releases, especially now that 2024 is getting a brand new Zelda game of its own. So maybe when Nintendo put only on Wii you for the trailers for these games back in the day, maybe they really meant it. A retro-styled neo-noir third-person homage of sorts to Max Payne, El Paso Elsewhere features slow-motion shooting of vampires and lots of it. There's no console that wouldn't benefit from more of that. It launched on PC and Xbox in September of 2023, so we've got our fingers crossed that September of 2024 will bring news of other console releases. And it's built in Unity, so it feels like there's an easy answer to the question of a Switch port. Falcom's 2004 RPG took its time coming to the West, and only on PSP, console-wise, so it's just the sort of thing we'd love to see get a wider audience, and as the first in the Trails series, this and its direct sequels in this trilogy seem like fine candidates. And there's good news! Falcom's president, Toshihiro Kondo, has expressed a desire to re-release this one in some form, so there seems to be something in the works, and hopefully it's for Switch. Nier Automata made its way to Switch successfully, so why can't its predecessor, Nier Replicant version 1.2247 is a remaster of the PS3 360 Nier, but with the alternate protagonist that the Japan PS3 version offered. The story, however, is where it's at, and Replicant's narrative might just be Yokotaro's best. 
Charasan has also gone on the record saying he likes making money, so there's a good chance this could make its way to Switch, but we'd bet they're waiting to bring it back with the Switch successor instead. The visuals would definitely make use of that added power. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 are those kind of games that you sort of had to be there in the moment to really appreciate. And while most of us here on the site may shrug if you asked us if they're any good, there are tons of us out there that really love these games regardless of their flaws. And you know what? They deserve fresh life on Switch. Sonic Adventure 2 gave us the exceptional new character Shadow, and both games had the Chow Garden, which was a swell way to spend time between levels. This one being absent on Switch doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The inclusion of Shadow in the upcoming Sonic X Shadow Generations remaster gives us hope, but we imagine it'll be a good while yet until we get to roll around at the speed of sound on Switch. It's been years, but some of us on the team have held off playing The Witness in the hope that we'll be able to take its brain scratchers out of the house on Switch. The eventual arrival of Jonathan Blow's Braid Anniversary Edition gave us hope, and based on how long that took to turn up, we're estimating The Witness Switch Edition to launch sometime in 2045. So we'll see you then. While Excitebot's Trick Racing launched in North America, it never released in Europe, so a lot of our team never had the chance to play it, but they are big fans of Excite Truck, a straightforward and thoroughly enjoyable arcade-style gem from the early days of the Wii. So you'd think its great implementation of motion controls and the potential of HD rumble to convey the terrain your trucks are rumbling over would have made this a good fit for Switch already. So a straightforward port of either games, a compilation collection, or a brand new entry? Mm, we'd gladly take whatever you give us, Nintendo. So please just give us something. The Switch is a Zelda machine, with most of the mainline entries available to play in some form on the system. The Wii U outliers are obvious, but this 3DS gem shouldn't be forgotten in our rush to get our deluxe ports. At this point, with Echoes of Wisdom handling this year's top-down Zelda quota, we'd be surprised to see it. However, this is prime for revisiting in a few years on the next console, as a sequel to one of the most revered entries in the series, which somehow managed to not be crushed under the weight of our expectations, this deserves to be released from its 3DS cage. Another point-and-click for everyone's favorite point-and-click console. Norco was a 2022 indie darling set in an alternate Louisiana that we hoped would come to Switch the following year. And uh, obviously it's on this list, so it, it didn't. The publisher, Raw Fury, is fairly prolific on Switch, so we're still hopeful that this will eventually see a release on Nintendo's system. Star Trek games are few and far between, especially finding good ones on Nintendo consoles. But Star Trek Resurgence comes from a bunch of ex-Telltale devs and features a story set in the next generation movie era. Surely a perfect dev property match for the morality playing storytelling Trek is famous for. It went down well on other platforms, and we'd love to see it beam over. We have high hopes for this one, and the game was rated for Switch by the Australian rating board, so hopefully it's just a matter of time. We can't beg for ports without bringing up one of the last few great Wii U games that's still stuck on the console. And with the online modes all shut down now, there's never been a better time for Xenoblade Chronicles X to make its way to Switch. The series is at an all-time high following Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Future Redeemed. Let us ride those waves again, Monolith Soft! Maybe it's just the pessimist in us, but we're not too hopeful for this one anymore. Monolith is probably working on the next Xenoblade game or helping Nintendo out with their next big title, and likely wouldn't want to rehash something from so long ago. Just like everyone else riding the wave of interest from the recent TV show, we'd love to see a version of Fallout on Switch aside from Shelter. We'd probably pick to port 3, but New Vegas or 4 would also be great choices. Microsoft is keen to expand its offerings across platforms, and Bethesda had plenty of success with Skyrim on Switch, but chances seem remote for this one. A competent port would be a fairly easy win in our books, though. Yeah, we know that Masayoshi Yokoyama still doesn't think the Switch is a good fit for the Like a Dragon Yakuza franchise, but you know what? We're putting our boot down. We disagree. With Sega, it's such a coin flip. You'd think that 140 plus million Switch gamers would be reason enough to, 
you know, test the waters with a Yakuza port of some description, but having been burned by Wii U, it takes time to turn the corporate decision-making ship around. But that number is so big. There are so many of us that would love to play these on the go on a Nintendo platform. And you know, Nintendo, Sega, the Steam Deck is beating you in that department, and you just can't keep Kiryu and Co. away from the Switch forever. Another exquisite indie that we hoped might get a cheeky 10th anniversary edition in 2023 is Papers, Please. But the game Mars After Midnight was occupying the developer Lucas Pope's time, and having turned in the excellent return of the Oberdin on Switch in 2019, he's probably not jonesing to return to his breakthrough game again when the world is his oyster. Pope once joked that Papers, Please is heading to consoles next in 2031. And while we'd love to have it on Switch, it feels like if it were going to happen, it would have happened by now. The panic-inducing chiptune-infused Avoid-Em-Up Super Hexagon would look and feel fantastic on a Switch OLED. Throw in some HD rumble and boom, you're set. It's probably slim chances though, given its age and how easy it is to play on another device you probably already own. And yet, it's not a game that would require a 100-person team in 18 months to port. So we'd love to be wrong. Following on from Princess Peach Showtime, it would be fantastic to see the team sneak in a cheeky late-gen port of Yoshi's Woolly World, perhaps with some added poochie for good measure, and maybe re-release that amiibo too. It's got as good a chance as any of the remaining last-gen exclusives, plus a cuteness level that's off the charts. It's a guaranteed way to make us all feel good. We've got three, we've now got two, and believe it or not, we're still missing Luigi's Mansion 1. Am I starting to sound a little crazy? Well, maybe this list is making me crazy. The GameCube original that started it all saw a 3DS re-release, but having the entire Luigi's Mansion set on Switch, which incidentally now also boasts a full set of the GameCube Pikmin games and more just makes sense, to us at least. But enough sense for Nintendo to do it? Eh, eh. Man, I'm starting to scare myself now. We may already have Persona 3 on Switch, but Atlas went and remade the darn thing over a year ago, didn't they? From the ground up, Persona 3 Reload uses the PS2 FES edition as a base and brings the game to modern standards, Persona 5 standards, and it's bloody beautiful. This is arguably the Persona game to start with nowadays, if you've never played one before, but it's locked to PC and other consoles for now. Earlier this year, the game's director, Takuya Yamaguchi, said the team decided early on that there would be no Switch version, but the idea certainly came up. This, along with the upcoming metaphor, are probable candidates for the Switch's successor. Hopefully. Please, hear us, Atlas. Oof. When you really look at it that way, the Switch actually is still missing quite a lot. And now, of course, this list isn't perfect. There are tons of other games that we could have included. So let us know in the comments down below if you think there's something that we sorely missed on this list, or if you really agree with our take on some of these games. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more videos like this, then why don't you take a look at that subscribe button and consider how it would look on the successor. Maybe it's more doable there. Maybe it looks just fine here. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you to our incredible staff of writers over at Nintendo Life for putting together this list and allowing me to adapt it for you all here. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time. Oh.